Long ago, when these ancient Grecian temples were new, hemp was already old in the service of mankind. For thousands of years, even then, this plant had been grown for cordage and coarse cloth in China and elsewhere in the East. For centuries prior to about 1850, all the ships that sailed the western seas were rigged with hemp and rope and sails. For the sailor, no less than the hangman, hemp was indispensable. A 44-gun frigate, like our cherished old Ironsides, took over 60 tons of hemp for rigging. including an anchor cable 25 inches in circumference. The Conestoga wagons and prairie schooners of pioneer days were covered with hemp and canvas. Indeed, the very word canvas comes from the Arabic word for hemp. In those days, hemp was an important crop in Kentucky and Missouri. Then came cheaper imported fibers for cordage, like jute, sisal, and manila hemp, and the culture of hemp in America declined. But now, with Philippine and East Indian sources of hemp in the hands of the Japanese, and shipment of jute from India curtailed, American hemp must meet the needs of our army and navy, as well as of our industries. In 1942, patriotic farmers, at the government's request, planted 36,000 acres of seed hemp an increase of several thousand percent. The goal for 1943 is 50,000 acres of seed hemp. In Kentucky, much of the seed hemp acreage is on river bottom land such as this, along the Kentucky River Gorge. Some of these fields are inaccessible except by boat. Thus, plans are afoot for a great expansion of the hemp industry as a part of the war program. This film is designed to tell farmers how to handle this ancient crop now little known outside Kentucky and Wisconsin. This is hemp seed. Be careful how you use it. For to grow hemp legally, you must have a federal registration and tax stamp. This is provided for in your contract. Ask your AAA committee man or your county agent about it. Don't forget, hemp demands a rich, well-drained soil such as is found here in the bluegrass region of Kentucky or in central Wisconsin. must be loose and rich in organic matter. Poor soils won't do. Soil that will grow good corn will usually grow hemp. Hemp is not hard on the soil. In Kentucky, it has been grown for several years on the same ground, though this practice is not recommended. A dense and shady crop, hemp tends to choke out weeds. Here's a Canada thistle that couldn't stand the competition dead as a dodo. Thus, hemp leaves the ground in good condition for the following crop. For fiber, hemp should be sown five pecks to the acre. With drill, the closer the rows, the better. These rows are spaced about four inches. This hemp has been broadcast. Either way, it should be sown thick enough to grow a slender stalk. Here's an ideal stand. The right height to be harvested easily thick enough to grow slender stalks that are easy to cut and process. Stalks like these here on the left, they yield the most fiber and the best. Those on the right are too coarse and woody. For seed, hemp is planted in hills like corn, sometimes by hand. Hemp is a dioecious plant. The female flower is inconspicuous but the male flower is easily spotted. In seed production, after the pollen has been shed, these male plants are cut out. These are the seeds on a female plant. Hemp for fiber is ready to harvest when the pollen is shedding and the leaves are falling. In Kentucky, hemp harvest comes in August. Here, the old standby has been the self-rake reaper, which has been used for a generation or more. Hemp grows so luxuriantly in Kentucky that harvesting is sometimes difficult, which may account for the popularity of the self-rake with its lateral stroke. A 
A modified rice binder has been used to some extent. This machine works well in average hemp. Recently, the improved hemp harvester, used for many years in Wisconsin, has been introduced in Kentucky. This machine spreads the hemp in a continuous swath. It is a far cry from this fast and efficient modern harvester to the Armstrong model of yore. But here's one kind of harvester, at least, that doesn't stall in the heaviest hemp. In Kentucky, hand cutting is practiced in opening fields for the machines. In Kentucky, hemp is shucked as soon as safe after cutting to be spread out for retting later in the fall. In Wisconsin, hemp is harvested in September. Here, the hemp harvester with automatic spreader is standard equipment. Note how smoothly the rotating apron lays the swaths preparatory to retting. Here it is a common and essential practice to leave headlands around hemp fields. These strips may be planted to other crops, preferably small grain. Thus the harvester has room to make its first round without preparatory hand cutting. Here the machine is running over corn stubble. When the cutter bar is much shorter than the hemp is tall, overlapping occurs. Not so good for retting. The standard cut is eight to nine feet. The length of time hemp is left on the ground to rest depends on the weather. The swaths must be turned to get a uniform rest. When the woody core breaks away readily, like this, the hemp is about ready to take up and bind into bundles. Well-retted hemp is light to dark gray. The fiber tends to pull away from the stalk. The presence of stalks in the bowstring stage indicates that retting is well underway. When hemp is short or tangled, or when the ground is too wet for machines, it is bound by hand. A wooden buck is used. Twine will do for tying, but the hemp itself makes a good band. When conditions are favorable, the pickup binder is commonly used. The swaths should lie smooth and even with stalks parallel. The picker won't work well in tangled hemp. After binding, hemp is shocked as soon as possible to stop further retting. In 1942, 14,000 acres of fiber hemp were harvested in the United States. The goal for 1943 is 300,000 acres. Thus, hemp, cannabis sativa, the old standby cordage fiber, is staging a strong comeback. This is Kentucky hemp going into the dryer of a mill at Versailles. In the old days, breaking was done by hand, one of the hardest jobs known to man. Now the power breaker makes quick work of it. Spinning American hemp into rope yarn or twine in the old Kentucky River Mill at Frankfort, Kentucky. Another pioneer plant that has been making cordage for more than a century.
All such plants will presently be turning out products spun from American-grown hemp. Twine of various kinds for tying, winding armatures, and upholsterer's work. Rope for marine rigging and towing, for hay forks, derricks, and heavy-duty tackle. Light-duty fire hose. Thread for shoes for millions of American soldiers. And parachute webbing for our paratroopers. As for the United States Navy, every battleship requires 34,000 feet of rope and other craft accordingly. So here in the Boston Navy Yard, where cables for frigates were made long ago, Crews are now working night and day, making cordage for the fleet. In the old days, rope yarn was spun by hand. Today, even the rope walk is mechanized. 160 fathoms to go. The rope yarn feeds through holes in an iron plate. This is manila hemp from the Navy's rapidly dwindling reserve. When that is gone, American hemp will go on duty again. Hemp for mooring ships, hemp for tow lines. Hemp for tackle and gear. Hemp for countless naval uses, both on ship and shore. Just as in the days when old Ironside sailed the seas victorious, with her hempen shrouds and hempen sails. Hemp for victory.